back with question two. Uh, chain models exclude a volume. What else can I ask a lot? So my undergraduate research and I are trying to develop a new novel polymeric material that can be added to a uh, lithium ion cathode slurry, increase or decrease the viscosity of the slurry. So we have uh, not three, we have four different materials, A, B, C, and D. Undergraduate research created the plot below. Polymers were put in the same um, slurry solvent at the same shear conditions. So uh, we are dealing with a log. Uh, this is the log of intrinsic viscosity, so there should be another kind of bracket here, uh, versus log of M molecular weight. Uh, it's really nice. So the slope of A is 0 0.5, B is 2, C is 0 0.8. Um, again, so C is green. D, we know the slope here. D, the slope is going to be 0. So before we even get to kind of reading the question, we know this is our mark Ewing equation. So we have that expression for the intrinsic viscosity here, which is different from viscosity of our solution, polymer and solvent versus the uh, specific viscosity. So the contribution just due to the uh, polymer. The mark Ewing equation, K, um, M, again, which is proportional to our uh, degree of polymerization because we know that M is just mass of our P unit times N. So to the A, and we know that if A is equal to 0 0.5, we're in a theta solvent. If A is greater than 0 0.5, specifically 0 0.8, it's going to be equal to a good solvent, alpha greater than one. And if A is less than 0 0.5, specifically if it's zero, it's going to be an alpha of this one, bad solvent. So let's kind of start to characterize uh, and tabulate the kind of values we have here. So we're going to describe our polymers. So I have material A, B, C, D. I know from the smart Kuink equation, all those uh, issues, or not issues, those uh, parameters of alpha. So if I take the log of intrinsic viscosity to here, my slope is just going to give me my, the slope of this curve is going to give me my solvent quality A. Um, so let's go ahead and see. So we know that uh, we could start to describe A, we could describe alpha, we could describe excluded volume, we could describe monomer monomer, we could describe monomer solvent, et cetera, et cetera. Let me kind of erase here. Before we even start to kind of deal with that expression, that's just review. Everyone knows that at this point from that mark Ewing equation. So for A, I know my slope is 0 0.5. So I know that I'm in a theta solvent. I'm going to do a type of solvent as well. So when we mix those different polymers in that same solvent, so here we know that this is a theta solvent. If this is 0 0.5, I know my alpha is equal to 1. I know my excluded volume is 0. My monomer solvent interactions are basically not preferred either way. B, 2. So this slope is 2. It's a really, really, really good solvent. And actually something weird. It's almost kind of like extended um, uh, beyond kind of that limit of a good solvent. So something really, really interesting is going on. So excluded volume, much, much, much greater than 0. Um, my monomer monomer interactions are very uh, positive. My monomer solvent interactions are very, very negative. Again, this chain wants to extend solvent. Very, very good, great solvent. Amazing, unbelievable solvent. C, 0 0.8. So here's our usual example of a good solvent. Again, greater than zero. Same, but just uh, probably lower in magnitude here. That's kind of what I'm trying to denote here. Good solvent. And D, if my slope is zero, I know that I'm in a bad solvent, less than one. My excluded volume is negative, so it's less than zero. My monomer monomer interaction, those are very favorable. And my monomer solvent interactions are positive. So bad solvent. So let's see what the question's asking for. So how did my undergraduates generate the plots uh, above, right here? So, and then what is the physically the difference between this? We've kind of already answered and discussed this question, but let's go back all the way to lecture five notes. So this is specific viscosity. So this is um, the increase in viscosity beyond that of the solvent due to the additives, due to polymer additives. So this here, when we were talking about our freely chaining regime, we're just talking about eta. Eta is going to be uh, the polymer viscosity uh, here. Uh, and that's due to kind of the solvent viscosity plus this hard, uh, hard sphere fraction there. Um, this is our specific viscosity. So it's the contribution, again, um, the increase in viscosity beyond that of the solvent due to the polymer. Um, so again, polymer viscosity, uh, specific viscosity, and then intrinsic viscosity. 
Again, as that limit, that concentration goes to zero, that's what we get here. And we talked about in the last um, kind of discussion here, the way that we obtain these, uh, we take two measurements. So we plot viscosity of the solution specifically, we plot specific viscosity. So the way we generate that um, log log plot, so we do a plot of first this, actually let's go to here. Actually, let's go right here. So we take this plot first for one molecular weight, uh, and we plot the specific viscosity, normalize with the concentration, extrapolate all the way down to where C2 goes to zero, that limit, and we get our one value of intrinsic viscosity for molecular weight. Then we do that, we do the same plot multiple times for multiple molecular weights, and then we'll get our log log plot of intrinsic viscosity. We could plot this versus log of molecular weight. That's it. So that's kind of that discussion, that distinction between uh, those values there. So that's how they generate their plot. That's the physical difference. Again, ex explain that in more detail. What can you tell me about scooter value, monomer, monomer, solvent reactions, monomer, uh, solvent monomer, solvent reactions, monomer, monomer reactions, and solvent quality of each polymer? Energetically, what is the competition can cause a polymer to extend or collapse? So we've already tabulated that here. Again, that's why a good approach to solving these problems. And then energetically, what's the competition? It's between that delta H, between again, these monomer, monomer, these monomer solvent interactions versus that's going to want it to do what? Extend or coil up and collapse. Delta S confirmation, that always wants us to go to our kind of theta solvent state. We want to maximize our configurations. So that's that energy competition uh, in this section. So how would you model uh, the R squared distance of each polymer? How does N scale? So we know for theta, R mean squared scales as N to the 1 half. For alpha greater than 1, this. For alpha less than 1, it is N to the 1 third. So that was how we model our polymers. How does N scale? Describe in great detail insight. Um, this is a nice uh, question here. So in our Marcoink equation, our y-intercept gives us this. Again, we had that theta k m to the a. This k value has c infinity in it. The value of this plot here, this y-intercept in this expression, will tell us something about C infinity. So the larger the C infinity, the larger, the kind of stiffer the bond, you know, the more difficult it is to kind of rotate. So we can gain some insight uh, into this polymer. So like this has a very, very small K. That could be, you know, a C infinity of like polyethylene. So C, H, H, H. But this one right here could be like Kevlar. Lots of different like aromatic rings in the backbone. Uh, and then amide linkages and all, all sorts of kind of you know, messy, bulky uh, things or long pendant chains that go like that, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, that's essentially what we're dealing with uh, here. So let's go to, that's the insight we can give there. Um, can any of these polymers be created uh, using uncorrelated random walks to model monomer positions? Yes. And when we're in the theta uh, condition, we could basically model our polymer like that. So. The rest of the, uh, once you're beyond theta, you have to use the chemist model chains. Those are correlated random walks. So, explain that. What model will best describe how the fluid interacts with each polymer? Um, and thus, how you can decide the size of each polymer compared to its theta solvent conditions. And then this, how about the relative, just ignore this one. This is a typo here. So, how we describe each of the polymers below, whether in the, in the freely, uh, freely um, draining regime or the non-draining regime. So remember, we said that the polymer viscosity will scale with N in the freely draining regime, and then polymer viscosity will scale with like N to one half, N to one thirds, or N to three fifths, depending on uh, if, if we're in the non-draining regime. Again, we could get kind of shielding there. So let's look at what's going on here. So if I'm in a theta solvent condition, what is, where am I gonna be? Non-draining or draining regime? So let me add another column here. Erase. Well, I'm going to be regime. So I'm in the theta solvent. Well, I, I'm pretty much going to be in the non draining regime. If I'm in bad solvent, I definitely know I'm in the non draining regime. Good solvent here, with when it had that value of two, that is very, very highly extended. I know I'm in the freely draining regime, so I know that's going to scale with N there. Now, the good solvent, 
we need a little bit more information. So let's look at the good solvent, so C. So C is our green. So we can kind of see that that, K, that C infinity value is not super extended. It might not exactly, you know, uh, even though it's in a good solvent, it's not in a really, really, really good solvent, so it's fully extended. So I would accept basically non-draining, or it could be freely drained regime. Again, we need some more information. What's the molecular weight of the polymer? Like, um, at the shear conditions, like, is it fully extended? It doesn't seem to be the kind of the case where it's really going beyond essentially the good solvent case. But um, so it kind of depends. We need some more information to really deduce there. But these are really safe answers. Uh, right? I'm pretty confident about those. So let's go back. And then we know, obviously, if it's, you know, compared to if we're in a theta solvent, we're in a good solvent, our chain is larger, bad solvent, lower, and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much all uh, we've got here for this question. So well, next time we'll go on to the uh, next question, which is our infamous polymer uh, phase diagram questions. So more on that next time. I'll see you then. Thanks. Bye.